The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host, Don McIntosh, and today we're going to be talking about cancer. Here to talk with us is Dr. Neil Nedley. He's a specialist in internal medicine, and he's from Ardmore, Oklahoma. Welcome, Dr. Nedley. Thank you, Don. Now, you, uh, you do internal medicine, but you do a lot of different things under that uh, rubric. One of the things is, is the things like you're doing today, education. And we're talking today about cancer, and that kind of strikes fear in people's hearts. Should it? Absolutely. Yeah, cancer is a deadly disease, and it often disfigures and really humiliates uh, significantly before that death occurs. And uh, is it the leading cause of death? Where is it now? Yeah, uh, depending on how you look at it, it could be the leading cause of death. Uh, coronary artery disease used to be considered the leading cause of death. Uh, there are less cases of that than there used to be, but there's more cases of cancer. Uh, and so, in some estimations, cancer now is number one. Over 550,000 deaths per year in this country just due to cancer. And there's, uh, you know, there's warning signs like uh, bleeding and unusual bowel habits and all those different kind of things. We've talked about that in a pre previous uh, program. But I think, you know, as we just begin here, we're not going to focus on that as much, but we're going to be talking about the immune system and what we have to defend against it in this program. But let's just briefly mention that uh, people should be uh, aware of the warning signs and the screenings. What are some of those? Well, warning signs would be unusual bleeding or discharge, change in bowel or bladder habits, uh, thickening of the breast, uh, uh, difficulty in swallowing or indigestion. Uh, that's a big warning sign, actually, mm -hmm. because reflux is so common and esophageal cancer is on the rise. Okay. Then, as far as screening, colonoscopies uh, at age 50, uh, stool slide test for microscopic blood at age 40, uh, for women, mammograms, uh, pap smears, mm -hmm. uh, for men, PSA tests, mm -hmm. uh, and then physical exams where there's attention to the thyroid, the lymph nodes, ovaries, testicles. What about thermograms? Thermograms, yes. Uh, actually, the thermograms uh, can have less radiation uh, mm -hmm. to them. However, uh, there's new mammography now that uh, only has about 1 50th of the radiation of previous mammograms. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you get modern man mammography, uh, really there isn't a concern that there used to be. So we're going to talk today about things that people can do once they know the warning signs. Of course, avoiding the carcinogens themselves like smoking and alcohol and uh, meats and all these different things that we put into our systems, uh, polluted areas. Uh, we talked about fish. We talked about how they, you know, are, seem to be drawing all the pollutants in, in the streams, but mm -hmm. uh, we want to talk about protective foods. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you know, interestingly, no matter how much we try, we can't completely avoid all carcinogens, and that's why we really need to focus on the immune system. Uh, and uh, I recently saw a cartoon of a uh, horse lying in a hospital bed, <laughs> and there was an IV going into the horse that said chemotherapy, and the caption said, all those years with the Marlboro Man. <laughs> oh, so yeah. In other words, you 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 can't avoid everything. You got to be. Uh, there's going to be people in your environment that, uh, or situations. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying people out there are cancer causing, but there's going to be situations that uh, you need to be looking at protective elements in foods. Yes, absolutely, and in other ways, it's not just uh, foods. But one of the greatest protective elements actually are the carotenoids. Carotenoids. Yeah, carotenoids are what turns your um, tomatoes red, your strawberries red. Actually, there are orange carotenoids as well. Uh, and uh, there are carotenoids also in green vegetables. Mm. Uh, and carotenoids actually decrease the tissue lining cancers. So cancer of the lung, uh, being a tissue lining of the bronchial tubes, is decreased. Uh, cancer of the mouth and oral cavity 
uh, mm -hmm. is decreased. Uh, and there's evidence showing cancer of the breast or any other lining tissue cancer, cancer of the endothelium uh, mm. or uh, the, the epithelial layers. Uh, so that's know, that outer cancers. layer, like if you're looking in there, it's just that, that layer right here. That's right. Exactly. And all of these are protecting that. That's right. The, uh, the carotenoids protect uh, from developing cancer. And that's only a one cell layer, isn't it? That's right. Often it's just a one cell layer. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So uh, we have a graphic uh, actually describing the foods that are high in carotenoids. And uh, you can see mixed vegetables, pretty good source. That's 78% of the RD, RDA, or the recommended daily amounts for beta carotene. Uh, getting above 100 is even better. Cantaloupe, just a half of a cantaloupe, 86%. Sweet red bell pepper, if you eat a whole one of those, 135% of the RDA of mm. beta carotene. Sweet potato, again being that orange color, loaded with beta carotene, 249% for 40 uh, for a, a medium uh, baked sweet potato. Cooked pumpkins, 271%. Raw carrots, a cup, 309%. But notice the cooked carrots have even more. The cooking of the carrots actually breaks down some of the fibrous membranes and allows more beta carotene into the system. Hmm. And then the highest source are orange yams, peeled after baking, uh, one cup, 436%. Mm, and this is going to, if you eat those, that's going to be protecting that layer. Exactly. Wow. Yep. And many cancers form in the epithelium. Mm, great. Any other protected foods we should know about? Uh, vitamin C foods. Vitamin C is a potent antioxidant. Okay. Antioxidants will protect uh, against a number of cancers. Actually, uh, vitamin C not only can protect you from cancer, uh, but also your offspring if you're a male. Uh, studies show that uh, males who are not getting 250 milligrams of vitamin C per day Mm -hmm. uh, their sperm can be genetically damaged, even though they don't have bad genes themselves. Their sperm can be genetically damaged, and that damaged sperm can increase the risk of cancer of the kidney, cancer of the nervous system, uh, and even lymphoma in their children. Mm. And many people don't realize that uh, cancer is the second leading cause of death in children. And uh, many of those cancers are not from the children's lifestyle habits, but the lifestyle habits of the parents. So we really need to get the message out. Vitamin Any C. man who is reproductive and wanting to have children needs to get enough vitamin C. Well, I'm a pastor. I do a lot of premarital counseling. Maybe I should just give them vitamin C. There you go. Sessions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, foods that are high in vitamin C then. We have a graphic on that as well. Okay. And uh, the foods that are high in vitamin C uh, are listed uh, on the screen. Broccoli. Uh, at, with vitamin C, you want to have it raw. Cooking it is going to destroy about half the vitamin C. So you can see broccoli raw is going to have more, a half cup, 41 milligrams. Sweet green bell pepper, uh, 66 milligrams. Hmm. Just one orange will have 70 milligrams of vitamin C. But many people are unaware that that small kiwi has even more. Mm. 75 milligrams of vitamin C. And then strawberries are loaded, one cup, 82 milligrams of vitamin C. Grapefruit, higher yet, 94 milligrams. I love Brussels grapefruit. sprouts are loaded. They're so loaded that even if they're boiled, mm. one cup is going to have 98 milligrams. That's a hard sell for me. Orange juice, <laughs> uh, fresh, uh, one cup, 124 milligrams. Mm -hmm. And sweet red bell pepper, uh, one medium, 141 milligrams. A lot of people don't realize red bell pepper is not only high in beta carotene, but very high in vitamin C. Mm. Now, in regards to orange juice, what type of orange juice do you think would have more vitamin C in it? The orange juice that's ready to serve, uh, that you buy off the shelf, or the orange juice that comes from the orange concentrate? Boy, I'd say probably off the shelf because they added to it. Well, uh, false. Uh, <laughs> off the shelf, if it stays there for a while, yeah. just keeping it on the shelf is going to deactivate the vitamin C. I knew that, and but so I was just saying you're there, trying to trick me. <laughs> if you're there, uh, you know, if it's been there a week or two, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot less vitamin C. So the orange concentrate would be able to preserve that, or if you s freshly squeeze that orange juice, mm -hmm. uh, would even be better than the orange concentrate. Boy, a kiwi and some orange juice would uh, be good. But yeah. I'm going to have to, if I want to tell you, I'm going to avoid the Brussels sprouts myself. But the other stuff there, I just love it all. Yeah, well, you can avoid several of those foods and still get your 250 milligrams a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other vitamins we need that are protective, uh, especially with cancer? Vitamin E. 
is very important in protecting cancer vitamin e is actually a more potent antioxidant can even vitamin c and vitamin e in foods has been shown to reduce prostate cancer and also actually skin cancer mm. uh, one uh, interesting study in rabbits a hairless strain of rabbits uh, where ultraviolet light was shown down on them so much so that 24 percent of them got skin cancer within a few weeks uh, if the rabbits were fed extra vitamin C and E, none of them got skin cancer. So C seems to work with E in helping to prevent skin cancer. Hmm. And we have a graphic on the foods that are high in vitamin E as kind well. Kind of feel sorry for those uh, hairless uh, rabbits or rats or whatever they are, but let's yeah. look at our list. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I do too, but those, that was the study. <laughs> uh, soybean oil, uh, one tablespoon, 23% of the RDA of vitamin E hmm. uh, for one day. Just 10 almonds would have 27%. Love almonds, almonds are loaded nut. with vitamin E. Mm -hmm. uh, canola oil. Uh, one tablespoon, 30% of the RDA. Almond butter, of course, is concentrated, and that would be a good source. Sunflower seeds are an excellent source. Just one tablespoon, 42% mm. of the intake of vitamin E. Good news e. for a Kansan like me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then there are other foods that are higher yet, uh, the sunflower oil, of course, being more concentrated, and wheat germ oil, uh, an excellent source. And uh, that really underscores the need to eat the whole wheat bread. If you're eating the white bread, you're not getting the vitamin E. So it sounds like it from this list that the, uh, the concentration is in the oil of those foods. That's true. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, and so it tends to come with the fat of plants. Mm -hmm. uh, you're really not going to get it in the fat of animals, uh, mm -hmm. per se, near that array. Unless they've been eating a lot of plants. Uh, well, even then, not near as high as getting it directly sure. from the plants. And I was talking to a man that, you know, works for a, a huge manufacturing uh, plant in the Midwest that makes soybean oil, and he was telling me that a, that a soybean, or excuse me, sunflower seed, yeah. sunflower uh, oil and all that stuff, high concentration in those, uh, in those seeds. Yes. But you, you can see that there as well. Yeah, vitamin E is uh, very important there. And by the way, don't be afraid of the food-grade canola. Uh, there's a lot of people out there saying canola is the cause of mad cow disease and is really tractor oil and that type of thing. Uh, there is a type of rapeseed oil that is used for tractors and is not food grade, but <laughs> they've gotten that confused and they think that's what people are eating on the, off the shelf, and that's not true. Canola has been shown to be a healthy oil. So really the uh, food, uh, this produce department in the supermarket is... Uh, like a friend of mine says, the Department of Defense. Absolutely. <laughs> if you want to go there and, and, and get tooled up. Yeah. We want to talk about antioxidants and all these different things when we come back and, and, and look more fully at that. But uh, looking at the warning signs, avoiding the carcinogenic foods, uh, have your screening as well, but then going and enhancing the immune system with these protective foods. That's the message. That's the message. And of course, there's others, some protective foods as well, selenium foods. Uh, actually are protective too. We're talking with Dr. Neil Nelly. We're talking about how to protect yourself against cancer. That's good news that God has provided uh, fruits and vegetables and nuts as well that can be protective. When we come back, we're going to look at the antioxidants. Join us when we come back. Are you confused about the endless stream of new and often contradictory health information? With companies trying to sell new drugs and special interest groups paying for studies that spin the facts, where can you find a common sense approach to health? One way is to ask for your free copy of Dr. Arnott's 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health. Dr. Timothy Arnott and the Lifestyle Center of America produced this helpful booklet of 24 short, practical health tips based on scientific research and the Bible that will help you live longer, happier, and healthier. For example, did you know that women who drink more water lower the risk of a heart attack? Or that seven to eight hours of sleep a night can minimize your risk of ever developing diabetes? Find out how to lower your blood pressure and much more. If you're looking for help, not hype, then this booklet's for you. Just log on to 3abn.org and click on free offers or call us during regular business hours. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Nedley about cancer. Uh, the bad news is a lot of people are getting cancer, but the good news is there are things you can do to protect yourself against it. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Don. In our Great first, to be here. In our first half, we were talking about protective foods. We are talking about vitamin uh, C. We said we should probably mention that in marriage counseling because <laughs> the male can protect his uh, offspring, offspring from, cancer. from cancer. Fascinating. 
and then also the vitamin E, largely in the plant oils, and that's protective as well. And you also mentioned at the end selenium. What's selenium? Selenium is a trace mineral, uh, and it's in the soil, and it's uh, found primarily in uh, wheat products and seeds. Uh, particularly the wheat grown in the Dakotas uh, is loaded with selenium, mm. and that prevents colon cancer. So we want to talk now about uh, so-called antioxidants. Is that like something like that's against oxygen? Are you against oxygen, Dr. Nedley? Well, uh, no. Oxygen is a very good thing, but to get your tissues oxidized is not a good thing. All right. So tell me, what, what's that mean? You're a well, biochemist major. Yeah. Uh, O2 is great, but O3 is not great when you bring it in. O3 is, uh, is ozone. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> ozone, if you put it into the system, that, o that free um, oxygen off of the O2 is like a free radical. And so it bounce around, the around and, b and bang up things and, and actually get into genes and help change the genes. So, so the antioxidants uh, are protecting against O3. Exactly. And right. other types of, uh, of substances that can actually oxidize the tissues or cause cancer. So let's go back to the Department of Defense. We're in the food section. <laughs> right. And uh, we're going to look at antioxidants. You're going to help us do that. Yes. Uh, interestingly, a cup of kale uh, has 50 milligrams of vitamin C wow. and 13 units of vitamin E. Mm. But if you take a look at the antioxidant potential of a cup of kale, mm -hmm. it's actually equal to 800 units of vitamin E and 1,100 milligrams of vitamin C. Whoa! So in other words, the whole plant actually supersedes by far the sum of its component parts as mm. far as the antioxidant potential. Wow. And that's why it's much better than, you know, than giving them vitamin C at marriage counseling. A bottle of vitamin C would be giving them a, uh, a whole cup there of, of kale. kale. <laughs> you know, I, I think maybe that's something we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the University of California at Berkeley went the next step and uh, actually took a look at the top 10 antioxidant fruits. Okay, let's look at those. And uh, we have them uh, up on the screen as a graphic. Uh, but number one, well, I, I usually like to start at number 10 and go the other way around. But number one is strawberry. Mm, that's good news for me. Strawberry, very potent antioxidant fruit. Plum, a lot of people don't think of, uh, you know, they think of plums being a rather humble fruit. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually very potent in antioxidant. Orange is number three. Red grapes with all their bioflavonoids, number four. Kiwi, number five. Grapefruit, six. White grapes. Not mm. quite as good as red grapes, but still very good. Bananas, number eight. Apples uh, fall in line there at number nine. And they rated tomato as a fruit, and that is number ten. Wow. Tomato has been shown to particularly help prevent prostate cancer. So this, uh, because of, I guess, the red pigment or something in it? Yeah, the red pigment <laughs> in tomatoes, lycopene. Those with the highest levels of lycopene in their bloodstream from fruits and vegetables have the lowest rates of pancreatic cancer in the world and also lower rates of prostate cancer and other cancers. Mm. So strawberry, and, and all these things are kind of red and uh, there's white too, but the, these are the antioxidants. So take this list with you when you go to the store the next time if you want to be protected. Absolutely. But the big message is kale, right? Well, uh, kale is a vegetable, and mm -hmm. so they went and ranked the vegetables as well. And I should mention they did not rank the legumes. Uh, uh, and if they had done that, some of the legumes may have come out even on top of some of the vegetables because beans we know are loaded with a number of different antioxidant uh, uh, chemicals in them uh, that are made in the formation of the legume. But uh, let's take a look at the graphic on the top 10 antioxidant vegetables. Okay. Uh, number uh, one, garlic. Garlic. Very potent antioxidant vegetable. It mm. actually has some antibacterial, antiviral properties. It has been shown to also help prevent heart disease as well as cancer. Kale comes in as number two. Mm. And I'm happy about that. Kale is actually my favorite green, at least the way Erica makes it at home. Spinach, uh, it is uh, good advice uh, to follow your grandma when she said to eat your spinach. Number four, Brussels sprouts. Number five, alfalfa sprouts. Mm. Number six is broccoli. Seven, beets. Mm -hmm. Eight, red bell pepper. We've been talking about that as far as its vitamin E and C potential. Nine is onion. And ten, corn. Corn. Not corn chips. Not corn chips. <laughs> okay. but the whole corn. 
So uh, these foods, uh, back to kale and all those others, they're, they're just excellent. Yes. Yeah, and they are excellent. And that's why the American Cancer Society continues to recommend to people to eat their fruits and vegetables. Now, what you're telling me is that some of these are just higher um, in these substances than, than medications or other things you can get. Why are, why are that, these not just being touted even more and more, like when you go to your physician, he has a bowl of strawberries and gives them to you. Why not? It, it should, really should be. Mm -hmm. It should be part of health education uh, to inform people that the produce section can prevent them from actually suffering a, a horrible death. I mean, cancer is a horrible death. It's awful and very painful. Uh, and these fruits and vegetables and study after study have been shown to prevent it. Now you were telling me that there was some research being done on turmeric, but it was not funded by, uh, you know, these agencies that usually fund things for our health. It was funded by, like I think you said, the Department of Defense or something. Right. But. Uh, the studies on these foods, there's not a lot of study how, uh, because you can't really, what, market it? Well, uh, what I was describing to you was not just the cancer prevention studies. The cancer prevention studies are done through epidemiology, so the study of disease groups and then the study of what they ate mm -hmm. or what lifestyle habits they had. Where we can't get the funding is in the treatment. I see. And so if we're using plant foods to treat cancer, there's no pharmaceutical company who's going to invest in that because you can't patent a plant. You know, no one can patent a <laughs> strawberry and says it belongs to <coughs> Pfizer. You can't patent turmeric because it's a natural product. I see. And so uh, what Dr. Agarwal uh, at MD Anderson in Houston was saying uh, was that he can't get funding for studies. And his studies are showing turmeric pre not only preventing but actually treating uh, breast cancer, uh, treating uh, multiple myeloma, uh, treating a number of different cancers that are very difficult to treat, and he's having success with that, uh, at least in animal studies, and he's wanting to branch over to human studies, but he's having trouble funding it uh, because you can't get it from companies, and you have to try to get it from the U.S. government, and his arm of the U.S. government that helped him fund his last turmeric study was the Department of Defense. Hmm, amazing. Okay, so you know, uh, you know, we talk about the plant sources. I want to just add one other question. Some uh, companies are taking these phytochemicals, uh, these antioxidants, and they're putting them into pill form and different things. Are, um, is there anything to that? Well, in pill form, they're going to be good too. But if you want to get tomorrow's phytochemical mm -hmm. that has been shown to prevent cancer, mm -hmm. you'll get it in today's fruits and vegetables because that's where they get it from. And so uh, I recommend eating the fruits and vegetables because there's probably even other beneficial properties besides the lycopene and the C and the E that we don't know about. Fiber, all those other things we do know about. There's other things as well there that may be good for us. Correct. Okay, uh, so we're talking about the immune system here. We've talked about the protective foods. We talked about vitamin C. We talked about vitamin E. We talked about the fruits that were antioxidants. We talked about the vegetables that were antioxidants. Anything else for boosting the immune system? Exercise. Physical exercise actually will improve interferon levels. It will actually boost uh, natural interferon levels. Interferon is a chemotherapy agent that we use in certain types of uh, cancers. But your own white blood cells make it. Mm -hmm. And it will make more by vigorous exercise. Also, uh, improving the interleukin levels. It improves interleukin 1, interleukin 2, and it's also been shown to improve natural killer cells. Mm -hmm. Natural killer cells don't work by the antibody system, which is another system of immune defense that the body has, but seem to be able to sniff out cancer cells and destroy it. It's actually still a mystery as to how the natural killer cells work, but we do know that exercise improves natural killer cells and can mm. even double the amount. Okay, so if your exercise is making your, your, your T killer cells just mean, lean, fighting machines, they can sniff better, they can, they can find what's causing the problem. Yes, absolutely. And so mm. we recommend uh, aerobic physical exercise on a daily basis, including uh, vigorous exercise. And a lot mm. of people may not feel fit enough to do that, but if they alternate vigorous exercise with like rest or slow exercise, maybe 40 seconds each, Mm -hmm. uh, they can get that vigorous exercise and still benefit from it a great deal. What about uh, obesity? You know, I've heard that someone that's obese has a constant state of kind of inflammation or infection. Is that true? Is this something one trying to avoid? No, it is true. Uh, obesity suppresses the immune system as well, and that's why there have been a number of cancers associated with obesity. 
cancer of the esophagus, cancer of the colon, prostate, breast, uh, lymphoma. Uh, the, the list goes on in regards to obesity uh, and its role in helping bring about uh, cancer, probably due to its suppressant effect on the immune system, but there may be some other factors as well. Okay, exercise, obesity, anything else with our immune system? One of the things about obesity is to, to realize the, the new way of finding out whether you're obese or not. Okay. Uh, you know, of course, you can step on the scale, and that can give you a clue. Uh, if you pinch uh, here and you're, um, and you're pinching more than an inch, uh, that's an indicator you're obese. I'm going to do it right here. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to talk after. <laughs> Dr. Scharfenberg says you can lay down here on the floor, and if you put your chin down and you can't see your feet, that's a sign that you're obese. <laughs> uh, but actually, the new scientific way is to do a waist-to-hip measurement. Uh, you put a uh, measuring tape around your waist above where your bones are at, and I used to say that uh, above the bones, but really a lot of people would miss their waist measurement if they didn't also include the navel in that, because some people's navel is way down here. So you want to put the navel in that waist mm -hmm. measurement, and then the denominator is the hip measurement, and that's where the bones are at. And so if the waist-to-hip ratio yes. is greater than 0 0.8, and you're a woman, you have an increased risk of all the cancers that I mentioned earlier that are associated with obesity. Mm. You also have an increased risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. If it's greater than 0 0.95, and you're a man, you have an increased risk of all of those cancers as well. Mm. Because really, when you're that obese there, the problem is not what it looks like on the outside, but what's inside, all of the fat around all those organs. Exactly. The abdominal obesity is where the risk is at, and that's what this is measuring. Mm. Well, we, we've learned a lot about the, the most important uh, section of the supermarket today. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, people are usually walking right past that, going to the dairy section, the meat section, and it's usually the first section in the store. So you really don't even have to shop as long, men, <laughs> if you take this to heart. But do take it to heart. This is uh, very important. Dr. Nelly, thank you so much for being with us today to talk about our immune system and uh, Department of Defense. D d is there a spiritual lesson you draw from this? Well, there is a spiritual lesson. We Sin is spiritual cancer, and we need to have cancer warning signs. We need to have screening tests for sin like David did, and we need to have prevention where we avoid spiritual carcinogens and also avoid our, boost our spiritual immune system, and then that would give us life eternal. Good advice. Thanks so much for joining us today, and we hope as a result of today's program, you're going to go to the supermarket, buy those foods, protect yourself, protect your kids, your family, your friends, and we hope that God richly blesses you, that you have health that lasts for a lifetime, and you know Him as well.